Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to explain what you should do when you play this game in order to maximize your keys and conserve your resources. The first thing is to never let yourself get hit. Don't ever save after you take damage unless it's an avoidance fight. There's probably only two or three fights in the game where you're going to want to save after a hit. Anything else, press R. So the first floor is pretty self-explanatory. You're just going to pick a path up the side of the room. It's, you can't screw this up unless you have Down Syndrome. This floor actually is tricky when you first come in because... The average player is going to want to open this door, but you don't have to because you can do the downward plane here and save yourself a key. In order to do the downward plane, you're going to want to align with either this wall up here or up here. This is obviously it's the same align, but this is much easier to get. And with that align, you can bonk your head and go through this. Just keep trying and you'll get through it. You'll be tempted to maybe open this door. Don't do it. And, uh... You don't have to open this either. I recommend opening the one down here. Uh, the second floor is a treasure room. You're gonna wanna eventually open every single door in here because you need every attack gem in the tower if you wanna go past the bad ending. So... When you get your green key, this is not a bad place to use the first one. These are all locked, but you're not going to be able to acquire the items in all of these right away. This one here is probably your best bet because it contains two of each. So that's probably going to be the one you want first. Just um, be mindful that... Maybe you shouldn't open these until you feel like you have to. Depending on your key situation, you may not want to rush in here right away. Although, I would recommend getting this room as soon as humanly possible. Because, like I said, it contains two attacks and two defenses. You also want to kill every single monster in the tower. Every single monster. Because experience is very important. And some of the level ups will, will give you keys and attack upgrades. This is probably the easiest floor to screw up on. There's a very specific route through this floor to save keys, and I myself screwed this up the first time. So you want your room to look like this when the doors are open. Now what you need to know here is that there is uh, a secret wall here. So you're going to want to jump down and get in here, and then take the save, and then you can open this wall up. And that allows you to like collect the power-ups in here and up here. And then you should be able to get all four of these with just opening this door and this door. This is a big key save in this room. Probably one of the most important rooms in the game for saving keys. It will be tedious going around and up and around and back and around and up and around and back. But just, you gotta do it if you want to save keys. But yeah, be mindful of the secret wall here and here. Which makes getting everything possible with only expending maybe two keys for the whole room. And you're not going to be able to kill every monster you see when you first come through these rooms. So as you power up, you have to make a point to go back and kill the monsters that you left behind. It's not uncommon to have to go back to floor one because you're not going to be able to do kill everything in here right away. And then come back and kill these guys when you can because the experience is very important. And yes, that means you might have to do the super F jump and maybe the downward plane a second time. So moving up... Uh, don't jump in the stairs unless you have enough attack to fight the guy on the other side. But uh, don't open this door and don't open this door. This You're going to be tempted to open this door because you're going to see power-ups in here. And the prospect of doing the plane jump is going to scare you, maybe, if you're inexperienced. But you can single jump through this thing backwards and forwards. So don't be intimidated by it. Uh, there is also a fake wall here, which is worth noting if you have trouble doing the ledge grab. Because you're going to want to come up here and get power-ups as soon as you can. 
Uh, I think most fan game players will probably be able to do that, but if you can't, you can use the fake wall here to get up. It makes it a little bit easier. Uh, you'll notice there's a big guy here. That's an avoidance fight. He protects an item that is absolutely necessary to finishing the game. Um, you're not going to be able to fight him right now, but when you get to him later, you're going to really want to take him out. Now, I don't recommend doing him right away, and I'll explain why in a little while, but you're going to be tempted to. But he's very RNG, and he hits like a truck, and it's a long fight. So I recommend coming back when you have more defense and HP to spare. Uh, this particular secret room uh, has a puzzle in it, and the music is also loud in here. The entire gimmick of this room involves around you shooting crystals. And the crystals will shoot fireballs, and the fireballs will bounce around the room to remove the ice. This old man down here gives you a very cryptic riddle to try to explain what's going on here. But it doesn't really make sense to anybody. I think maybe it was lost in translation. So, the spoiler here is that he says something about being 3 o'clock. And most people are trying to type the number 3 in here. So what you're going to want to do is actually make it look like a clock where the hands of a clock will be pointing at 3 o'clock. So you're going to have to remove everything around here and then this corner. And that will give you a green key. Now in this room, you're going to collect wings that let you teleport around the, uh, the game. Uh, you might be tempted to use those wings, but do not use them. Because there's very specific spots in the game where the wings are supposed to be used. And if you use them outside of those spots, you risk running a soft lock at the game. So when you go up to the next floor, you're going to see a bunch of power-ups down in this hole. Um, this is probably going to tempt you to want to jump down and use your wing to port out. Uh, you can't do that or you're going to soft lock. The, the item behind the avoidance on the previous floor lets you teleport up and down floors at will. If you press H on your keyboard at any time, you can type in a floor name and it'll put you back on that floor. You can do it even in mid-jump. This is important because you can use this tool to maximize keys, getting them in situations that only have seemingly one way out. And that's what you're going to use to get these power-ups much later. Uh, this room in particular, uh, you're not going to want to open the blue door. you got to save your blue keys. Uh, there is a secret wall here, which will help you grab a red crystal here early. And uh, you're going to see a treasure room up here, again, which has a pretty big attack up and defense up. But you're probably not going to be able to kill the stuff in there right now. And it's sealed with a green key. It's also a good use of a green key to open that door. Because you need every single power-up to proceed through the game. So it's pretty much mandatory that this room gets cleared. But if you have only one green key, you're better off using it on the one downstairs before you use this one. And uh, I think that's pretty much it with this room. Again, you've got, you got to kill every monster you see. Do not leave anything alive because experience is super important in this game. Uh, this is a tricky floor too. Um, as you can see, I've opened every single door in here except this one. Uh, you don't have to open this door, but you can't get the health unless you open it. So it's just not worth using the key to get the HP because you're not going to be taking hits anyway, except for avoidance fights. Uh, worth noting in here, there is a secret floor here. And if you look at the room when you get here and compare it to what you're seeing now, you're going to see where the secret doors are. So you should pretty much do that with every room in case I forget something. But, uh... Yeah, I mean, this room's pretty straightforward. Every door in here can be opened except for this one. You're just not going to want to ever open this door. Because it's not worth your key right now. And those keys will be very precious later on, the gold ones in particular. Um... This room... You have to be very careful in this particular room because if you jump down this hole right away, there's a guy standing here. And people have said that they've gotten stuck down here and can't get back up. You actually can get back up if that happens. There's an align that lets you stand on, this, on the lip of this block with the dude and you can jump out. But uh, it's best to not go down there until you can kill him. Uh, there's a guy over here. You're going to be tempted to use your red key to fight him. Uh, if you touch this wall... You can do this downward sphincter thing, you know, with a couple of tries if you're decent. Uh, there's a fake wall up here, but you don't need it. 
there's a big guy here who you're not going to be able to kill anyway. Uh, and this green door, no matter what you do, do not open this green door, or you will risk screwing yourself royally. There's a secret wall down here that's blocked by two bats. Just level up and collect power-ups until you can kill those bats. Uh, other than that, like I said, there's a secret wall down here, so you don't have to open this. Uh, this secret down here, you won't be able to open this until much later in the game. It requires an item that you don't get until later on to open that wall. So don't spend time harping over this right now if you're watching the video before you've cleared the room. Uh, going up on 8, this is another tricky room where you're going to be tempted to use keys that you don't have to. Um, you're going to see a key in here, and you're going to think, oh, I can trade, you know, a, a gold key for the red key or whatever that's in there. Don't do it. Uh, the item you get, again, from the avoidance fight downstairs that lets you teleport will allow you to get in here and teleport out without opening any of these doors. Uh, and that's a pretty substantial key save because these colors are all precious colors. You're not going to have a lot of these to go around. Um, you can spend the three. There's going to be three gold doors here. You can spend that opening that. And the other important thing in this room is in this corner, there's going to be a bunch of guys protecting an item. Uh, that item increases XP that you gain by 50%. So you want to get this item as fast as possible. This should be a high priority thing, is, is killing the two guys that guard this door to open the door to get in there and get that item. That will let you... It's, it's a huge gain and it makes leveling quicker and it, it will give you a little bit more leeway with your attack up and stuff from leveling up. Um, other than that, just keep in mind that there is a teleport item, and some of these items that look like they're un un unobtainable can be gotten by teleporting out after you pick them up. So your room should look like this, ultimately, when you're done. There is a bunch of guys guarding a key here. It's a silver key. Uh, you're, you will need that at some point, but you don't need it now, so don't worry about trying to get it right away. Uh, this floor is a little tricky because there's a row of doors here with an item, and if you're going to be going beyond the bad ending, you need that item. But what they don't tell you, obviously, is there's a fake wall here that allows you to drop outside of the map. And if you open that up, you can fall all the way down and skip opening everything in here and going through these rooms. Now, it's not to say you're not going to want to go through these rooms. You will, because the left side has valuable attack upgrades. Uh, the right side has defense, which isn't as important right now, because defense doesn't let you progress further into the game. Uh, you'll also notice a uh, row of monsters down here with an item. Uh, the item in here will reveal secret doors, but that's not really super valuable. But the XP you get from killing all the monsters in there is. But it's not a high priority thing, so at this point I would just leave it and then come back for it later. Um, you will want these things in here though, these red upgrades. So when you get them, when you get the power to clear these guys, you definitely want to do that. Uh, there is a door here that I opened that you don't have to open, but it's a convenience to open it. If you have the, if you've beaten the avoidance with the teleporting item, you can just come up here and teleport out. But you can afford to open it. I still have a bunch of keys left over, and I used it so, and it's a good convenience, and it lets you wait a little bit longer before doing the avoidance, which you're going to want to prolong as long as possible. Um, in here, you're going to see a guy in here. Uh, this guy is really important because he opens the door to the basement. And the basement also has a requirement of screwing you for 100 hit points just to go in it. Which is another reason why you shouldn't be taking any damage up until this point. And another reason why we're not fighting the avoidance yet. Because if you do the avoidance and you go under 100 HP and you don't have any health to find, you'll never get into the basement and you'll never be able to finish the game. So you're going to want to open this door and set that guy free. And you're going to see a bunch of attack upgrades and stuff in here and monsters. Uh, don't worry about that right now. When you get the item from the Avoidance guy, you can grab those and pour it out. You know, so you don't have to do it all in one shot. Because the conveyors make this a one-way death trip, which is pretty terrible. Uh, the guy here is an Avoidance fight. He's the, the final boss before the bad ending. Uh, you may get hit a couple times during that. But you're not going to want to do that right now. You're not going to want to do that until everything else has been addressed. Uh, and these, you won't be able to go in here yet. So don't worry about that just yet. 
So now that the guy is free, the focus of the game is going to go down to the basement. So you're going to come back to the first floor. And you're going to be allowed to go in here. And when you cross through the barrier here, he's going to take you for 100 hit points. And there's nothing you can do about it. So if you've been listening carefully and you haven't been taking any hits, you should be good. And don't worry about losing the HP because once you go into the basement, at the end of this room and into the next room, there's power-ups and more HP. Now, if you still kept your wing like you're supposed to, then uh, you're going to need to use your downstairs teleporting wing at this point. Because when you get to the end of the room with the conveyor belt, there's going to be a door here that's sealed. And he's going to tell you... He won't say it now, but he's going to tell you that you need to teleport downstairs. And that's going to take you into this dark room down here. Now, when you land, be careful, there's a button. And once you step on this button, you'll be getting in random encounters down here every couple steps. Uh, there's a lot of health in this room, so make sure you don't land on that and go around and pick up the health first, so you don't have to worry about getting molested every two steps. Uh, the important thing about this floor is that in the center of the floor, there is an avoidance fight. Uh, your HP and defense don't matter, because if you get hit once in that fight, you're dead. So, don't really worry about it too much, but you do want to beat this fight because it reduces the immunity frames on monsters which is pretty much going to be necessary for keeping your sanity in the later floors. Plus, he's worth a ton of XP. If you have the plus 50% XP item, he's worth even that much more. Uh, to open his room, you're going to have to press this button and, I think, beat 10 random encounters. Uh, it's kind of tedious, but it's not that hard to do. So, once he's dead, uh, you're pretty much not going to have um, another choice at this point. Uh, there is another secret that I did forget to talk about on uh was it this the first floor uh in here there's a secret room uh that gives you an item that you have to give to the fairy down on the first floor and i probably should have mentioned this earlier but when you give her she's blocking a key that's green and you that's pretty much going to be your first green key uh there is that that area is got some pretty serious needle in it and there's a, a boss at the end that's very cheesy if you don't have attack power. So try to get as much attack power as you can before you do that. But it's going to be a high priority because you want the green key to get into the treasure room. To be able to boost your attack even more. So at this point, the priority is going to be defeating the avoidance fight that is on the fourth floor. You should have a lot of defense and HP. And you don't have to worry about conserving it quite as much because you paid the toll to get into the basement. Uh... Like I said, it's a it's a three minute long fight maybe, and it's got a lot of RNG and it's really cheap. So you're just gonna have to ask yourself how many hits you're comfortable with taking in there. Really good players can do it without getting hit. Uh, I took a couple hits in there, but like I said, I shook it off. There's a little HP behind him when you win to help mitigate the damage, but uh, you don't want to like go for broke because you got a long ways to go. Maybe two or three hits, and then after that, you better start reevaluating if you want to keep it. Um, it's probably the first real serious grind of the game, and probably one of the uh, least fair ones in the game, in my opinion. Uh, once you have that, you're just going to want to use the warping to go around and pick up all the power-ups you missed that are behind doors. Uh, most importantly is the one in the hole on whatever floor it was. In the bottom right-hand corner. There were uh, some keys in a pit. I can't remember which floor it was. Anyway, you're going to want to get them. And then you're going to want to come back in here. And you want to grab the key here and pour it out. So exploit the warp as much as possible. The other good thing about the warp oop, is that on the ninth floor, like I said... Uh, you can move around in here and warp out if you didn't open this door. But, like I said, it's not the end of the world if you open it. And most importantly, on the 10th floor, you can run in here and get the power-ups one at a time and pour it out after each fight to keep them. This will make the fights much easier and it'll take the pressure off you to have to do them all in one shot. Uh, after that, you have to fight this guy to proceed through the rest of the game. Uh, one, other, one other important thing before you fight him is that back to this room... Once you have the item from the avoidance fight, 
these two rooms pretty much require you to have it because up here, there's no way you're going to be doing a corner, a corner, a plane, a downward plane, and then a downward sphincter unless you're Jesus. So once you have that avoidance item, you can come in here, grab the grab the power-ups, and then warp back to the stairs. Uh, and the same thing goes with this room up here. Uh, this one will require a one-frame jump to get out, which is really shitty. Uh, but with the item from the boss, you can just simply pour it out and keep the power-ups. So, 10th floor, you're going to have to grind the Toho fight. It's long, it's unfair at times. Just do the best you can. You're probably going to take a hit or two on it. Figure out what you're comfortable with. Uh, again, no, but be mindful because the game is, you know, not even half over probably at this point in terms of the amount of fights you're going to have to do. Uh, once you beat that, uh, the red door will take you to the bad ending. So, I mean, you can save the game and go in there and see the bad ending if you want, but then load it because there's no reason to waste a key that goes nowhere. Um, then your next priority is going to be these mini games that open up. Uh, these, of the four mini games, three of them you have to do to the end. Uh, one of them gives an item that lets you get hit one time, like a shield in every fight. And one of them gives a charge shot, uh, which is the one that looks like a mouse shooter game, and the other one that looks like it's something from Nang. Uh, get those items as soon as possible, because they're going to make your life a lot easier. Uh, the other one is sort of a, an area where you have to use your mouse and play stuff. Uh, it's a really tough area, uh, but there's a lot of keys and power-ups in that one. Uh, the one in the top right we call the Echo Chamber. It's a very, very difficult one to earn stars in, and it's the least necessary one. There's some extra keys and stuff in there, but there's no power-ups in there in terms of attack or defense. So you don't really have to do that right now. Uh, there's a YouTube video that I would recommend watching of Fragnatic that I'll probably link somewhere. Uh, it'll show you how to get the optimal stars in each one. If you really want to do it, I would highly recommend you use that video. Otherwise, you're going to be spending hours and hours in there trying to solve those things. Uh, and they're really unforgiving and very confusing. At that point, you're in the next leg of the game. Uh, take a look at the room. Notice the doors that are left closed. Uh, the blue ones here are saved. The red ones here are saved. Uh, what you can't see here, because I've already opened them, is there are secret doors next to the gold ones in the four corners. Uh, you're going to want to use those secret doors now and, and leave the gold ones shut. Uh, the divas in the four spots, uh, don't worry about them now. You're not even close to being able to do them. Uh, you're going to want to clear this entire room over time. Just do it as you can, as best you can. And like I said, be mindful of the of the, the doors that we've used shut here. Uh, this is the optimal key placement for this room. It's going to look like you can't climb up here because there's a guy there, but you can actually get on the ledge there and jump up. And also be mindful of this save. And probably this one, because you can actually save your guy in the spike and soft lock the game. I watched somebody do it, and it's terrible. So don't save over here. Only save if you're standing on the floor directly under it. And same thing here. Just be very careful about saving the game because you could get soft locked in a spike if you're like on a downward drop here or here if you're like up a little bit. And uh, that's pretty much that for this th that for this floor. Uh, this floor, there's power ups here. The guys are probably protecting them. You're not going to be strong enough to beat them. Just get through it. Come back for them later. Um, on this floor, there's going to be a lot of doors here. You're going to have to open every single door on this floor if you want the good ending because you need to talk to the people in these three rooms. Um, aside from that, there's really not much you can do here right now. Um, chances are when you get here, you're not going to be able to, to get up here and there's going to be lava blocking these that you're not going to be able to really deal with. Uh, in the one of the... Well, I'll get to that later. And when you get up here, you're not going to be able to do anything at all. This is a puzzle you have to solve. You can solve this puzzle on your own if you're a fucking genius. Uh, but if you can't solve it, don't worry, because the answer to it is hidden in the tower. All the way back down on the first floor. When you get strong enough, you should be able to have a, You should have the silver key from the conveyor room. You can open this door. There's a guy here who's a really tough bastard. When you beat him, you go over here. This is all locked with the diva keys. But right here, there is a map that will show you how to get through that room. And you will have to use your wing that reverses your coordinates to get through it. 
So hopefully you still have that. Also of note is that this floor, number 13, cannot be walked into normally. The stairs from 12 take you right up to 14. So on 13, you need to use the wing to take you up a floor, or, or on 12 rather, and that will get you into 13. Now once you step into 13 one time, you'll be able to warp to it as many times as you want with the item from the avoidance on the earlier floors. Uh, also take note of the doors in this room. You don't want to open the red ones. You can for convenience, but you don't have to, and I recommend you don't. Um, this area branches off into two different wings. Uh, one of them is an ice wing with a boss in it, and the other one is a fire wing. Uh, the ice wing has slippery floors, but there's boots that you can get in the minigame downstairs that will make the ice not work on your character. And given the precise jumps in the room, I think that's probably recommended to save yourself a lot of pain and suffering on the platforming in that room. One thing about that room where the creator kind of made a mistake that I capitalized on is the fact that he counts them as secret rooms even though they're mandatory. And in the secret rooms in this game, he lets you press backspace to warp out of the rooms. So what you can do is in this room, he expects you to hit all these buttons and do all this backtracking. But every time you hit a button, you can just backspace back to the beginning and save your game. It'll make this room a lot less painful if you do that. Uh, there is a big octopus boss up here. Uh, it's an avoidance. Uh, it's got a lot of stuff going on in it. You'll see it when you get there. Your HP doesn't really matter there because one hit kills you no matter what hits you. So you're going to have the shield from the minigame and that's it. And you're going to have to beat that guy. You have to beat him. So waiting and delaying the fight doesn't really help you in any way because your defense doesn't matter and your attack doesn't matter. So do it as soon as you can and get the items back there because there's a whole bunch of power-ups and keys back there. Now conversely, on the other side, there's a fire area up here. You're, that area is harder because you actually have to fight monsters in it, where in the ice area you don't. And the monsters in that area are fucking brutal. Uh, just clear it as best you can, get the power-ups in there, and try to keep your sanity because it's a fucker of a room. Uh, I think there are some doors in there, so just for the sake of documentation, we'll take a look at that room. This portal's kind of stupid because you have to jump and then jump again to get through it. But again, they're going to try to tempt you in this room to use your keys. You don't have to use your keys. Don't open this. Don't open the red one. Don't open the blue one. And just do your best to keep your sanity in here because these monsters are fucking scumbags. Now, by now, you should have the map, possibly. Which means that when you go up to this floor, the map will show you exactly where to go. Just follow the directions. Use the wing in the proper place. The stairs will open for you to be able to go up. You may not be able to beat these guys here. Um, they're fucking scumbags. And you're getting to the point now where you're going to have to seriously think about doing the divas. The Divas on 11 are scary as fuck, and there's no other way to put it. The guy on the right's the easiest one, it's the shortest fight, and yeah. If you have a lot of attack power, you can kill him pretty quickly when he becomes vulnerable. Uh, the guy up here, it's a, it's a two or three minute long avoidance, and... You're probably going to take damage in there. Uh, you need the key from this guy. Yeah, actually, well, you need the key from all three of these. Killing each one of these guys gives you a, a key that lets you go into the room back on the first floor. The most important thing on this floor is that there is an attack upgrade here that raises your attack by 10 points, which is huge. That pretty much opens... A lot of the remaining part of the tower so you want to get that as quickly as you can but yeah you're gonna have to open it this other one here with the club that just gives you defense you don't need that 
And I would say that the, the guy down here is by far the hardest one of these guys. He's stupidly hard. It's really precise pattern. And it's a long fight. It's, frankly, I don't think it's worth your time. You can live without the attack upgrade. And the defense is negligible. Uh, so at that point, um, you're going to have to start collecting items for these guys in the jail cell. Uh, each one of these guys is looking for a different item. The fairy is going to want you to get an item from this portal, which opens after you open the four gold doors in the four corners that you probably skipped by now. Once all four of them are open, this appears, and you have to platform through this area. Uh, the other guy is looking for the cross, I think, which is down in the item room on the first floor. And the old guys um, oh that's right you're not even gonna be able to get in here without the item that turns the lava turn into water uh, I believe that item is located at the center of the 11th floor in here there's an item here you need that to get into there to even talk to those guys so you should have that by now if you're strong enough to kill those guys um, this fairy, I think, somebody asks you for an item. That's that I, That's that fake wall going all the way back to the seventh floor. You have to shoot this with a charged up shot to open this wall. Uh, you don't get anything, I think, necessary for that except HP. But you're going to want the HP, obviously, because some of the avoidances you're going to have to do are really dicey. Uh, at this point, you move into the last leg of the game, which is... 16 and up. Uh, once you do the items for those guys in the jail cells, they're going to give you the crystals to put in here. Uh, you're going to have to kill these four guys to put the crystals in, obviously. You can keep going past this right now. You don't. It, they'll give you the illusion that you don't have to do it, and you can fight a boss. If you fight that boss without putting the crystals in, you pretty much screwed yourself if you save the game afterwards. So... Don't even be tempted to go in here and fight the boss until you've done the four crystals. Otherwise, you'll have to load a backup or you'll be rip. Uh, the four guys on the previous floor, um, they're really difficult. So just keep your head on straight and try to grind through them. Uh, the, one of them is a Bomberman fight. He's fairly, probably the easiest one to beat. The uh, the guy with the... Ch you can use a charge shot on a lot of these fights to, to make them easier. If your attack power is high enough, some of the bosses only go vulnerable for small periods of time. Uh, this guy in the top left, he's got like a spike that goes across the room on the floor. You're going to be tempted to just mash the spike, but you can only hit him once per cycle because of the immunity frame. So just use the charge shot every time, and you won't have to see his whole pattern. Um... Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. Once you have these four things beat, you're going to go up to uh, 17, assuming I can type it, and you're going to have to fight a boss here. And uh, once that guy's dead, you'll have access to 18, and there's some power-ups laying around here that you can grab. Just go around, grab everything you can, clean up everyone who's left over, and uh, if you followed my directions properly, you should have a bunch of keys left over, more than enough to handle whatever is going to be up here, and to reach the final boss when it opens. So that's it. Don't take hits unless you have to. You don't have to play flawlessly all the time, but some of the fights, like the Avoidance, the Divas, and the uh, some of the other big guys, the Toho fight too, it's okay if you get hit, but... Again, we don't know what's at the end, so just conserve as much as you can. And uh, that should be it.